Season 3 of Warzone and Modern Warfare 3 is finally here, and it's looking fantastic. We've got new weapons, new maps, and of course the return of Rebirth Island. So I thought now would be a great time to fine tune our controller settings, and we're starting with arguably the most important, and that's the button layout. Generally you want your button layout in such a way where it's as easy as possible to do all of the different movement mechanics in Warzone. So that's things like slide cancelling, like jumping around corners, like drop shotting, and unless you you have a paddled controller or you play claw, I would recommend Bumper Jumper Tactical to do all of these different things. So the tactical part is part of the tactical button layout, so the right analog stick clicked in makes you go crouch and prone so you can drop shot easily, but then left bumper is actually the jump button, so you can jump around a corner super easy without taking your fingers or thumbs off the controller, and it's super natural to slide cancel. With this layout though you will need to get used to using B or O as melee, and then X or A as your tactical equipment. For some people this is going to feel a little bit too different than what they normally use, so I would at least recommend going to tactical if you don't already. On top of this you can also flip your bumpers and triggers if you want to go one step further, and the idea of this is that you'll be able to aim in and shoot a millisecond quicker because it is quicker to click a button rather than pushing a trigger. For vibration I'd turn that off, and then for dead zones that's going to be dependent on your controller. Generally though I always recommend going as low as possible before you start getting stick drift which is essentially when your aim starts moving or your character starts moving around when you're not actually touching your controller. So the dream scenario here would be putting it all the way down to zero, so your controller is super responsive, but for most people you are just going to have natural stick drift from using your controller. So if you do have some, come on to here, put it up a little bit, go back into the game, test it out. If it's still drifting around, come back, put it up again, and then just keep doing that until it stops. And then as we come over to aiming, we have stick sensitivity. And again, there is a general rule of thumb with this, and that's to have as high as you can go until you start missing your shots consistently. So I actually recently put my sensitivity down to 4 and 4 instead of 6 and 6, but I did increase my ADS sensitivity multiplier, which is actually the sensitivity when you're aiming down your sights. A lot of Call of Duty professionals use 6-6 six, six for these, so that might be a good starting place if you are looking to get ahead. And then if you are ever struggling with your aim in terms of hitting your shots, you can just put down the sensitivity multiplier. Generally I'd recommend not going too high with this. I know I know some of you crazy people will be running 2020, but for most people that's not going to work. Then the next important setting is the aim response curve type. I've done a lot of back and forth with this, and actually the aim response curve type doesn't have a massive impact, but you can change it to suit your playstyle. If you're an all round player, so you're taking engagements at super close range, super long range, I'd actually recommend changing it to linear, whereas if you're only playing say Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer, and a lot of your engagements are closer range, I'd recommend going dynamic. For ADS sensitivity transition timing, put this on instant. Obviously aim assist you want switched on. And then for the aim assist type, default is absolutely fine. I find that this is the most consistent at different ranges. And then you'll also want that enabled for ADS as well. Now we move over to gameplay and movement behaviours. For automatic sprint, you want this on automatic tactical sprint. This means that you just have to lean forward on your analogue and you'll automatically go into a tactical sprint, i.e. the quickest movement you can possibly do. Not only does that make it easier, so your control doesn't wear out as quickly, but also makes you much quicker around the map and harder to hit. For slide maintain sprint, turn this off, and that's because a lot of the time when you're coming out of a slide, you'll want to do a bunch of different things. So that might be slide and drop shot, slide and jump shot, or just slide into a crouch or standing position as if you're slide cancelling. So by switching this setting off, it gives us full control to do whatever we like. Then as we come down the list here, you will want to switch off some of the mantle behaviours. And again, this is sort of similar to what we just said. A lot of the time the move movement, especially in gunfights, we want it to be manual, whereas when these settings are enabled, it gives us an automatic assist and can actually throw us off. So you might have had this where you try and jump shot in the middle of a gunfight, and you just end up jumping on something or grabbing onto something, and obviously you don't want that. For slide and dive behaviour, I recommend tap to slide. Slide cancelling is one of the most important features in Warzone and Call of Duty generally, and by having it on tap you can just do this much quicker and more consistently. But I still would have it on tap to slide rather than slide only, because diving still has an important place in movement. For parachute automatic behaviour, switch this off. This is because you can manually pull your chutes much closer to the ground than the automatic setting does for you, so you can just get to the ground quicker and loot up quicker. Sprinting door bash, have this enabled. And then the next important setting is down here, the weapon mount exit delay. Change this to instant if you're not on it already. Then of course if you are a new player or you haven't got around to doing it yet, change 
interact and reload behavior to prioritize interact. This makes it so you just have to tap your button rather than press it, so you save a little bit of time on every single important interaction. For armor plate behavior, put on apply all. It means you just have to press the button once, and you're going to apply all of your plates, freeing up the rest of your fingers and thumbs to do important movement mechanics. Then quite a lot of these are either subjective, not too important, or just fine on the default setting. There's not too much at the end here that's going to make or break your game. So there are all the updated controller settings for Season 3. Now that we're finished up here, why don't you join me over in these videos, where you can get the updated best graphic settings, or we can pop over here and check out the fastest way to complete the Season 3 Battle Pass.